Good morning, beautiful, beautiful day, June 24th, 2018. We are very happy to be here in the house of the Lord and ready to worship the Lord. This is a perfect time to worship the Lord and give thanks to Him. That's so, right. Father, we give you thanks for life. We are alive. That is awesome, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that we can worship you and give you, Lord, our hearts one more time. And receive the songs that we have for, for you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy. Amen. Amen. Amen.
deserve the glory. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. This is wonderful. We are going to collect our prayer request. If you have one, please fill it out, and we are going to pray for you. Every week we do that. And uh, also, if you have a testimony, feel free to sit down, my friends, please. All right. Well, it's time to say hello here. We're going to share some hugs. And, uh, well, let's do that. Stand up and let's, let's hug one another.
yes, Lord. You are welcome in this place, Lord. Atmosphere, Lord, in our hearts. your love and your presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You is what we need, Lord. It's you, Lord, what we need, what we are longing for, Lord. No anything else, no any other person, but you, Lord. You, Lord, the joy of our hearts the pearl of great price. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you so much, sweetheart. I love that song. I think every time we are in the presence of the Lord, it is impossible to not feel your heart just growing in faith and admiration for our good Lord. Today we are going to talk about a happy family. And uh, it is funny. I was watching the other day a show on TV and this guy, his brother asked him, are you happy? And the guy avoided the an to answer. <laughs> are you happy? He said, well, and he continued giving kind of uh, an excuse, but he didn't want to answer the question. And, and that is the question that I ask you today. Are you happy? Can you answer the question? It, it, is, it is a tough question, right? When you think about it, am I happy? Well, let's see what the scripture says. The Lord Jesus told us something very interesting when he was giving analogies about the kingdom of the Lord. And we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 13, verses 44, the Lord Jesus says, God's kingdom is like a treasure hidden in a field. One day, a man found the treasure... He hid it again and was so happy that he went and sold everything he owned and bought the field. That is the way the Lord Jesus is explaining about the importance of the kingdom of the Lord. But how many people really can grasp, grasp the concept of the value of the kingdom of the Lord? Unfortunately, not many people, because the truth is, most people, they're, they're, they are just thinking and uh, they are looking through their worldly eyes, through the flesh. And unfortunately, the desire is only for material stuff. They, they cannot see beyond what we see in, in this planet. But life is beyond what we see. Today we have a beautiful day. It's a sunny day and it's pretty outside, right? And some of you have your plans. You will have lunch here. You will do this and that. And, and it's great because that's, that is exactly what the Lord wants us to do. We, he wants us to enjoy life, right? That is his, the reason why, one of the reasons why he gave his life was for us to have an abundant life, of course. But the true joy is not the result of enjoying those things. Who doesn't like a good meal? You know, pr probably you like steak or you like seafood or you like uh, uh, vegetables. I don't know what you like, but whatever you like. Of course, it is a pleasure to enjoy the meal, but you cannot tell me that your true joy is the result of eating that. No, because it's a temporary thing and it... Gives you satisfaction, but that's it. Same thing is with acquiring things. Material stuff will never make us happy. Never. We get the things, but deeply there is a need. That is what the Lord Jesus said. The kingdom of the Lord is like this treasure that this person finds. 
and sells everything he owns in order to get the money to buy this treasure. It's the most important thing that anyone can have, the kingdom of the Lord. You realize that a happy person makes a happy family, right? Amen. And a bitter person makes a bitter family, yes. right? A happy person will make a family very happy. And a frustrated person is going to make a family very <laughs> frustrated. You know, one day somebody said to me, the closest image that you can have about heaven and hell is your home. <laughs> And I thought, wow, that's kind of tough. But think about it. Because our families, our home are exactly that. It's this group of people when everyone, like in these pictures that you see here on the screen, you know, everyone, if everyone is happy, it's going to make a happy family. So you need to think about your day and your family and your home where you go to be at peace. Where you go to enjoy what you like to enjoy in life, whether it's your recliner or your special chair there sitting in front of the patio or whatever it is what you like in your home. Is that place a place that you could hold? This is like heaven? Or probably some people think, no, man, it's the opposite. That's why I'm out all the time. I can't stand being in my home because it's like hell. That, that is sad, but it's a reality sometimes, right? That's why we need to understand that a happy family is the result of happy individuals there. And today the Lord wants us to learn more about being a happy individual, becoming a happy person. So if you are happy, it is because the Lord has blessed you. And he wants you to keep happy regardless if there are unhappy people around you. You need to understand that. Imagine if you are a person that has joy in your life, but you are around people that are bitter or frustrated. Their lives are their lives. They are not your life. You see that, right? You have your life. You can manage your emotions, your satisfaction, your personal views, but you cannot handle other people's views or reactions, emotions, health, financial situation. You cannot control those things. So you need to make a decision, and the decision is simple. Are you happy with the Lord? L listen, if you really think that the kingdom of the Lord is that important and the Lord makes you happy, you have to stick with that concept, with that idea, with that certainty, with that truth, and you say, the Lord is my joy. And if my this, or my that, or he, who, she, the, they are unhappy, well, I, I'm sorry for you guys, but I am happy. <laughs> you are happy, you go to the store, and you are shopping, and there are people that are upset because this, because that, and you go into the traffic and you see people driving this way, this other way. You go to work and you find people that are upset for this and that. And on and on the list continues, right? But if you are truly joyful in the Lord, if you are happy, the Lord wants you to keep happy, to continue being happy. To keep that joy in your heart and enjoy your day, enjoy your life. And you know, if there are other individuals around you, they are unhappy, that is not your problem. Do, do you realize that? It's not your problem. You didn't do it. You, you are not upsetting people. No, you are not. People get upset because they want to get upset. People get offended because they want to get offended. That's it. If the Lord is giving you so many good things and you are blessed and you are happy, he wants you to keep that joy, that happiness. Correct? Regardless if there are unhappy people around you. Now, let's see quickly certain characteristics of unhappy people. Do you want to come with me? Okay, in your bulletins you can have those also 
listed, but here there are some characteristics of unhappy people. Usually, they are frustrated with themselves. Unhappy people is frustrated with himself, with herself. Something is happening in their lives, and they are frustrated. Frustration is the result of unhappy people. Okay? Second thing, they destroy relationships one after the other. They just destroy the relationship, whether it's in, in the workplace or with friends or in church or in, with the neighbors, etc. They are always jumping to new relationships. Have you seen this? Because the, whoever is creating a, a, a mess, whoever is creating problems, you know, the problems are everywhere this person goes. Everywhere. It's just problems. They are destroying, destroying relationships everywhere they go because they are unhappy. <laughs> they are unhappy. Next characteristic of unhappy people is that they are not healthy and they are not taking good care of themselves. Sometimes we are sick, right? Are you cheerful when you are sick? No, we are not. <laughs> you have a problem with your stomach or your head, a certain part of your body is hurting. You are not smiling and all cheerful, no. Right? Naturally, you are hurting. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody that constantly is unhealthy. And the worst part is that they are not taking good care of themselves. That's why they are unhappy. You see that? The lack of good health makes a person unhappy. The lack of money makes a person unhappy. They don't have enough money, and they can find ways to make more money. With a poor health and without money, their future is uncertain. That's why they are afraid of the future. And that makes a person unhappy. Do you see that? Lack of health, lack of money, lack of good relationships, lack of a good relationship with the Lord, all that. Frustration. They are unhappy with what they do for a living. They just can't stand going to that workplace. They don't like what they do. Therefore, all that makes them afraid of the future. And of course, as a result of being afraid of the future, you will hear complaints all the time about everything. They have an ambiguous relationship with the Lord God. What is the meaning of having an ambiguous relationship? That means for a moment they are good with the Lord. Next minute they are, they are not okay with the Lord. <laughs> next minute they are okay with the Lord. The next minute they are not okay with the Lord. <laughs> It's an up and down. It's a drama story. Unhappy people are like that. And it's not your fault. No. You have to see it. It's not, you are not doing anything wrong. It's just they are like that. There are reasons why they are unhappy. And it's not your fault. You have to understand that. And the, the, the reason, the fact that they are unhappy makes them complain constantly about everything. And listen to what they are saying. My internet is too slow. The, the food is not enough warm. Too salty. The drink doesn't have, cold, not, not, doesn't have enough cold, uh, ice. My sheets are too hard. Uh, too hard. Uh, the temperature in the house is too cold. It's too warm. Outside is too sunny. It's too much rain. <laughs> Oh my gosh, there is nothing good on TV. The same songs again in the service. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, they complain constantly about everything. It's because they are unhappy. And it's not your fault. You have to see it. It's not your fault. You are not doing anything wrong. They are just unhappy. You go to work, and then all of a sudden you find this individual mad. Upset and is your supervisor poor you? <laughs> is your co worker <laughs> again? Is your neighbor again with that loud vehicle making noises, etc., etc., etc.? It's just like that because they are unhappy, they can see the good things in others without feeling envy, they can't see anything good in anything. 
You are there and you see something good and you say something positive about somebody, right? And you say, oh, I love that they this and that. And the, the unhappy people, they can't see that without feeling envy. Envy kills an unhappy person. Destroys them. It's, it is like a, like a disease. Envy is going inside of their guts. Because there are happy people. And they can't stand that. <laughs> because they are unhappy. And everywhere they are, they are always thinking, what, what is there for me? They cannot think of being part of something if they don't know what's there for them. Because they are unhappy. If I'm going to do this, What's there for me? That's, that's always what they are thinking. Because they are unhappy. Now you understand that, right? Remember, it's not your fault. They are unhappy. You are not doing anything wrong. They are just unhappy people. Okay? Now. There are more things that they do. As a result of all these frustrations, they usually do not have much. To contribute in their homes or families. So when, when there are get-togethers, unhappy people, they, they don't have much money to bring, to buy something. They don't have anything to contribute in the family because they are broke. They are unhappy. And um, at the end, what they show is that they don't care anymore. It's like, I don't care. You know, it's your uncle's birthday, but I don't care. It's Mother's Day. I don't care. I don't have any money. I have to work. Listen, but it's Christmas. So what? You know, it's the 4th of July. Come on. It's a holiday. Yeah, but I don't want to. They just show that they don't care anymore. Even though, listen to this, even though they, lo they do love their family. They love their family. But the thing is, they are so unhappy, they don't know how to manage all that. Now, if someone is unhappy, how this person could be different? Is it possible? Is there any hope <laughs> for an unhappy person? You know what is interesting? Sometimes we need to leave the experience of being unhappy to, to find happiness. It's like you have to be hungry to become satisfied. <coughs> you have to be really sleepy to enjoy the sleeping. You have to be all sweated to enjoy the shower. Do you understand? So sometimes we need to be unhappy in order to appreciate happiness and everything the good Lord can give us. So here we go. with. Uh, I'm going to share with you three things that any unhappy person can do to get out of the hole, okay? So here's the first thing. The first thing is you need to be happy with yourself. Love yourself and see yourself the same way the Lord sees you. So here is an unhappy person, right? Here is the unhappy person. And here is the Lord. The Lord sees this unhappy person with eyes of compassion. The Lord doesn't hate that person. <laughs> Do you understand that? The Lord sees the unhappy person with eyes of compassion. He's, he's thinking, this child is suffering. <laughs> I, I, I need to help my child. I want to help him. I want to help her. I want to help them. The, the Lord sees this person with eyes of compassion. Second, he, he sees this person with eyes of love. And he says, I gave my, my own son his blood. To wash away your sins. That, that is how much I loved you. And I love you. And I am hoping that you will have a better future. That is the way the Lord sees an unhappy person. So the unhappy person needs to see himself, herself, the same way. With eyes of compassion to himself. And think, you know what, I, I am messed up. I, I'm really unhappy. I'm so frustrated. I'm bitter. I'm not okay. I am not happy. Okay, I admit it. I'm not happy. But I don't know what to do. Well, the first thing is have compassion to yourself. 
stop beating yourself up. Be compassionate with yourself and, and try to take it easy. Because the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. And the Lord has hope for your future. So you need to start seeing yourself with eyes of hope. But there is only one way if you do it. Is step number two. It's through forgiveness. Unhappy people need to forgive themselves. If you are unhappy, you need to see that the Lord loves you. The Lord forgives you. The Lord has hopes for you, for your future. So now you need to go to the mirror and speak to yourself. And you will say, I'm sorry what I have done to myself. But I forgive myself for what I have done. How many people are able to say that? Are you able to come to, to the mirror and see yourself in the mirror and say, I forgive myself. I forgive you. Looking to yourself into your own eyes. Could you do that? You should. You need to experience forgiveness. The, for, the same forgiveness the Lord is giving you, you need to give it to yourself. Impart that forgiveness to yourself and say, why I am so mad at myself. I need to let it go and forgive others as well. You know, I remember I was a little boy and my dad was this and my dad was that and my mom this and my brother that and, and my grandmother this and I didn't have this and I la 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 creating the whole case to blame somebody, right? That's the whole idea. You need to forgive Everybody, if you really want to be free of the unhappiness, forgive everybody, forgive yourself. And you need to stop blaming the Lord. Listen, I, I haven't found any scripture, any verse in the Bible that says that we need to forgive God. I have not found that. I never have seen such a thing in the scripture. But one day somebody said to me that needed to forgive God. <laughs> and I said, well, if you feel that way, probably you should do it. I said, I don't see any scripture that supports that. But I guess that it, that's what you have. You have such a hate against the Lord and you need to forgive him because you were an orphan or, orphan, or because you were born just with one leg or because... A, B, C, all these issues that happened to you when you were a little kid or whatever. Well, I said, anything in order to be okay with the Lord. I think that that is a little bit extreme, you know. But yes, sometimes people are blaming the Lord for things. <laughs> At least you need to understand that. And you need to uh, acknowledge and say, well... I'm not going to blame the Lord anymore because I was born in the Kuala Lumpur in a poor family raised by a grandmother that was blind and all that we ate was corn. You understand? You have to stop blaming the Lord. Unhappy people are blaming the Lord as well. No, I do not, they say. But the truth is you see it because they don't want to worship the Lord. No, I don't blame the Lord. I just don't go to church. <laughs> I don't blame the Lord. I just don't like to give any money to church. I don't blame the Lord. I just don't like to read the Bible. I don't blame the Lord. I just don't pray. You see, they say they do not blame the Lord, but they do. Because basically they are not worshiping the Lord. That is the first commandment. Worship the Lord. There is only one God that saved you. In order to, to be free of the unhappiness, see yourself the way the Lord sees you, with eyes of compassion and love and hope. Forgive yourself, forgive others, and stop blaming the Lord. Then you can move to the next thing. Are you ready for the next thing? This is beautiful. This is beautiful, and I hope you will apply it in your life. Because step number three is the key. You know what is that? It is to start searching for a new beginning. 
If you are unhappy, you need to search for a new beginning. But I don't know where to start. Well, start by declaring <coughs> scriptures about your new future. Because listen, listen, my friends, this is important in your life. What you are saying every day is determining your future. Yep. What you are speaking in a daily basis, basically, it is creating the path where you are going to walk every day. Do you see that? Sure. When you are saying things like, uh, Monday, I hate, hate, hate Mondays. Can stand going back to work. When you say something like that, you are building a rocky, awful, ugly path for your day. Do you see that, right? But no, no that is not what you need to do. You need to create your future by declaring scriptures because that is the word of God. That is the will of God for your life. So you have to speak those words because while, while you are speaking those words, things are going to happen to you. You know, today is going to be a great day. Can you say that right now? Today is going to be a great day. Amen. I remember the story. Somebody told me the once. It's so funny. This girl, cute girl, goes to, to his daddy. He's in the kitchen having a cup of coffee. And the dad says, how are you doing, sweet, sweetie pie? And she says, fine. So the dad says, well, you better tell your face that. <laughs> I think it was so funny. This is going to be a great day. Let's say it all together. This is going to be a great day. Well, you better that, say that to your face. <laughs> you have to speak. The word of God, you have to speak with faith and believe what you are saying because you are basically creating the path of your future. I'm going to have a great day today. This month is going to be sensational and on and on and on. People know that, but what people don't know is the power of God's word in their lives. And there are scriptures here like 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. You say, the Lord forgave me, based on 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. And this is an example. You have your bulletins with you. Take the bulletins, and if you are listening, write these notes. Please, 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 please do something positive today, okay? Get a notebook quickly and write this scripture, 1 John chapter 1, and verse 9. The Lord forgave me. Later, tonight or tomorrow, during the week, Go to the Bible and read the scripture, exactly what the scripture says. And speak those words. Because you want to get out of unhappiness, right? You want to be happy. Well, let's speak what is right. The Lord forgave me. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. The Lord loves me. The Lord loves me. The Lord is my refuge. Psalm 62, verse 2. The Lord is my healer, Isaiah 53, 5. The Lord is the joy of my life, Psalm 28, 7. The Lord gives me peace, Colossians 3, 15. The Lord will help me, Habakkuk 3, 19. The Lord will provide, Malachi 3, 10. The Lord has a plan for me, Jeremiah 29, 11. You speak those words in the morning. I am so hurting. I am in pain. I don't know what to do today. I don't know how we're going to do to pay these bills. I, I feel awful. I feel that I am alone. Those are the words people say, and that reflects the unhappiness mental status they have. There is no mental health. They are just speaking those things. They are unhappy. Well, if you want to get out of unhappiness, I told you already, step one, step two, and step three is search for a new beginning. How? By 
start by declaring these words. Here in our bulletins, in the back of our bulletins, there are three passages that I want to read because when you hear these passages, you will be impressed. You know what, friends? If you take your time every day, as I am telling you constantly, <clears throat> forgive me, I say to you all the time, read the scripture. Psalm 62, verses 5 and 8. I must count down and turn to God. He is my only hope. He is my rock. The only one who can save me. He is my high place of safety where no army can defeat me. My victory and honor come from God. He is the mighty rock where I am safe. People, always put your trust in God. Tell him all your problems. God is our place of safety. Next passage, Psalm 66, verse 5 and 9. Look at what God has done. These things amaze us. He changed the sea to dry land, and his people went across the water on foot. So let's celebrate, because what he has done, he rules the world with his great power. He watches over people everywhere. No one can rebel against him. People praise our God, sing loud songs of praise to him. He continues to give us life, and he keeps us from falling. Psalm 67, 3 to 7. May people praise you, God. May all people praise you. May all nations rejoice. And what? And be happy. Because. Because. You, Lord, judge people fairly. You rule over every nation. May the people praise you, God. May all people praise you, God, our God. Bless us. Let our land give us a great harvest. May God bless us. And may all people on earth fear and respect him. Ooh, my goodness gracious. I love you, Lord Jesus. I love your word, Lord. I love your Holy Spirit. I love your word. Oh, Father, I feel so encouraged. Just by reading these scriptures to your people. Yeah. Oh, the power of the word of God will change your life by speaking those things. So step number three, search for a new beginning. How can I start, Gian? How can I start the new beginning? Well, start declaring positive things like the ones that I just shared with you. Next thing is you need to start thinking about your occupation. Invest time investigating about yourself, about your gifts, about your strengths, and about your skills. Certainly, when you are feeling happy by doing what you do in your daily life, you will feel much better. Because in life, it's not about how much money are you making, it's how much are you enjoying what you do. When you are enjoying what you do, that, that makes the whole difference in your life. So if you are unhappy because of your profession, my friend, whatever you do, whether it's for money or just because maybe you are retired, I don't know. Maybe you just have free time and, and, and now you just want to do something that will make you happy. Or perhaps you are in your 20s or your 30s and you are thinking, I am not sure. I am not sure if that kind of work is what I want to continue doing the rest of my life. Well, this is what I suggest you. Invest time investigating about yourself. Be honest with yourself and say, what is what I really like? Well, I really like the idea of uh, uh, having a barber shop, you know? I always thought that that would be a good thing to do. Can I do that? How much money would I need to start a barber shop? Do I need to get certified credentials? Can I open a barbershop in my home? And on and on and on. You just need to invest time investigating about yourself, about what you like, about your gifts, about your strengths, and about your skills. But you need to take that time doing that. But unfortunately, unhappy people, they just want to live in la-la land 
That's why you see a lot of unhappy people drunk all the time or drinking constantly or getting high, using drugs, or lost on, in front of the TV. Just don't. Mm, in front of that thing, without thinking, or just on Facebook. And you are not even reading. You're just, mm. It's just waste of time. And people, unhappy people, unhappy people need to, to understand that not just by declaring the word of God and seeing himself as a forgiven individual, but you need to reinvent yourself. You need to use your time in a way that you will be happy with yourself. The next thing, of course, you need to take care of your health. Whatever problems you have with your health, you need to take care of it and do the medic, take care of the medical attention the right way that you need to do it. You know, I, I believe that there are so many home remedies that work. I believe that. I believe that. And I have a story about that with my grandma. He used uh, this uh, marvelous essence oil, you know, out there in the, in the farm, in the coffee farm. And if you had a headache, she immediately says, come here, come here, mijo. I'm going to give you a little bit of the marvelous oil essence because that will heal your headache. And she rubs you, your head, you know. You have a stomachache, come here, mijo. I will give you a little spoon of this marvelous essence oil. Come on, get a sip of it. This will heal you. And of course, you are a kid, you know. <laughs> headache, stomachache, whatever. Marvelous essence oil. All and each one of the members of my family is still today, we tell jokes about it. <laughs> How are you feeling? Ah, you know, my elbow is a little bit hurting. I don't know what. Well, marvelous essence, oil, the solution. <laughs> you know? No, my friends. No, no, no. Not everything will be fixed with those kind of remedies. If there is something that is not right in your body, take medical attention. That's why they are doctors. And, and all those things, you go to those clinics and you investigate what is wrong. And then, of course, they will tell you what, is, what are the steps and you follow the steps. And naturally, you are going to make changes in your diet and exercising. Oh, I don't want to. I like to eat my cake and ice cream. Me too. But it's not healthy all the time. We need to change our diet. Unhappy people, you notice that? They just don't care about their health. They are aware. They have A, B, C, D, E, any number of issues with their health, and they keep eating the way that they want. They keep smoking what they want. They, they keep drinking what they want. They keep using, using drugs the way that they want. It is wrong. They are killing themselves. And no exercise. Bodies were created by the good Lord to be in, in movement. You know? I have a great friend. And we, we, we tease each other with this concept of being a mushroom. You know? Just sitting there in front of the, the TV in the recliner with the remote. And, hey, mushroom. We tease each other with that joke. But you know what? We know that that's not healthy. It's a joke. But the two of us, we are very active people. Is the only way that you can get out of unhappiness. How many people testify that after going to the gym and exercising for a half hour, they are happier? How many people say that? And of course, relationships. You need to search for a new beginning in your relationships. Those that are uh, divorced or single or whatever, they are looking for a new relationship. Well, they, they need to search for it. <laughs> the new relationship is not going to come to, to your lap. Oh, Lord, please bring her here. Ping! Voila. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen that way. You have to search for it. That's right. You need to go places. You need to expose yourself. I always say that to everybody. And a good friend that is listening to me right now knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Expose yourself, I say. What, I work too hard. I agree, and I like that. I don't like lazy people. Work, serve the Lord. Grocery shopping, home. 
work, serve the Lord, grocery shopping, home. Take care of the car, work, church, grocery shopping. Okay, that's okay, I say. But if you are not doing any exposure to potential candidates, there is no way that you will find anybody. Right? Search for new beginning, your spiritual life. For you that are watching and listening and you are following me and you are listening and you give me great compliments and I appreciate the messages and text messages and phone calls and all that that you guys do, likes on the post and all that. If you are looking for a new spiritual life, well, you know what? Maybe it's the time for you to connect with the church. And maybe if you are in Odessa, Texas, come to Victory Church. But if you are somewhere else, find a church. You have to search for a new beginning. You cannot be just there. Yeah, I'm unhappy, you know. I'm not going to any church. I have friends that for many years, they got upset for something in a church with a pastor and of course, that, that was not their fault because they are holy people. They never do anything wrong. It's always the pastor's fault. Friends like that, you know, I encourage them, you know, it's time for you to move on. Find somewhere else. The funny thing is I see them, you know, after five, ten years, I come back to that state or that country. You know that I have traveled in 15 countries. And here in America, yeah. I, I don't know how many states and cities. But I have so many friends, and I speak with them after years without seeing them. And I say, how is everything going? <laughs> Great. Are you part of any church now? Still looking. Well, when, when was the last time you went to church? Uh, I can't remember exactly. OK. Last year. Did you go last year, the most recent year? Not really. Oh, yeah, I went to a funeral. <laughs> How you can start again if you don't make the first step? Right? You have to start again. Now, I will share with you which are characteristics of a happy people. You are saying right now, if you are a happy person, in other words, you are not unhappy. You are thinking, wow, Gian, that was tough. But you know what? You're right. Unhappy people are like that. You are right. The question is, are you happy? Are you happy? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, I will, I will put here with you in the screen, and I will tell you things that will tell you if you are or not a happy person. OK? OK, the first thing that a happy person has, if you are happy, you are accomplished in your occupation and activities. Whatever is what you do, you feel satisfied about it. You say, you know what? I'll probably, being a carpenter is not a big deal for anybody, but I am a fine carpenter. You know, I like my hammer, and I like my tools, and the saws, and, you know, I build these tables, and, uh, you know, I know my tables are not the best tables in the world, you know? They're simple tables, let's face it. I'm not that great carpenter, but personally, I am happy being a carpenter. You are accomplished in your occupation and activities. Why? Because whatever else you do, because life is not just about work, right? It's your other activities. Whatever you do, you're accomplished about it. You're planning your 4th of July. You're doing your grocery shopping. You are the kind of person that goes to the store and you are smiling and people around you notice that you are happy. <laughs> You're fixing a vehicle, and you go to the shop, and, and you make friends quickly because you are happy. Whatever you do in your work, people know that you are a happy guy, a happy girl. Anyone in your family knows that you are a happy person because you are accomplished. It's the family reunion, and everybody, everyone wants to be around you because you are happy. First one. Second, you are happy when you are acceptably healthy and you are taking good care of yourself. Guys, it is unavoidable. We all are going to die. Our bodies are going to, 
to stop working one way or other, right? One way or others. You know, I'm 54, my eyes don't work that well, my ears neither. I can feel sometimes pain in my right shoulder, my left knee. You know, when I was a professional star in the World Cup in 1980, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, our bodies are going to start falling apart. It's unavoidable, you know, tooth, eyes, I mean, everything and it is going to happen. But what I'm saying is, if you are acceptably healthy, according with your age, and you are taking good care of yourself, you are happy. If you are doing that, yeah, maybe your body is not that great. You don't have those kind of muscles, or you don't have that kind of strength or whatever, but you are acceptably healthy. You can move, you can operate, but you are taking good care of yourself. That's the key. Happy people, listen to this, take care of themselves. Why? Because they want to live longer and in a healthy way. Unhappy people, they don't. Happy people see the plate and know what is what they eat and what they should eat and what they shouldn't eat. Happy people want to have longer, healthy lives. Happy people. You are happy if you have enough money and still are making more money, and you are generous, giving abundantly always. Do you have plenty of money to pay your bills and take care of all your obligations? Probably you are happy. You're happy. And also, you are still making extra money. Every time there is an opportunity, you make extra money here. You are very productive. And when it's the time to give, you are generous. And you give abundantly without mumbling and puffing. You just give away. You're happy. You're happy. If you do this, you're happy. That's the next one. Because you have plenty of money. You have enough to take care of your obligations, and still, you are continuing making more money, and you are willing to give more. You are happy when you have enough healthy, long-term relationships, and you are getting new ones all the time. It is wonderful when I see somebody that has a friend that they are friends for many, many, many years. But it's a healthy relationship, OK? A healthy relationship. I'm not talking about individuals that are friends because they are partners in crime, literally. <laughs> you know? If you have a long-term relationship with someone that is an evil person, someone that is just making messes everywhere, I'm not talking about that kind of long-term relationship. I'm talking about a long healthy, long-term relationship. People that are decent, people that have decent lives, people that they, they give a good example to others. No vices, no drama in their life, you know? Good financial statue, great example to the society. And you have a long, healthy, uh, healthy long-term relationship with people like that, you are happy. And on top of that, you are always getting new friends. Because when people get to know you, they say, you know, I like this individual. Has great qualities. You are happy when you are ready for new adventures. And you are ready for the new season in your life. Let's take a trip to that such and such place. Yeah, you are happy. Let's take a trip to such and such place. Uh, I don't know about that. Why? Well, I don't have the money. You know, I, don't, I, I cannot be in the car for many hours. I've never been in that city. I don't know anybody there. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think you need to come with me. <laughs> Because I'm happy and I want somebody ready for new adventures. Somebody that if I say, hey, let's go have coffee in that place, says, sure, I love the idea. You see? Ready for a new adventure. 
you know, I have not never, even in this Egyptian restaurant here in Midland, you want to go there? Egyptian restaurant in Midland? I never heard of such a thing. Egyptian, what kind of food is that? I don't know, I think they have camels. Camels! <laughs> Whatever! But if you are ready for new adventures, you are a happy person. And of course, if you are ready for the new season in your life. You are in your 20s. What is the new season? For the 30s. If you are in your 30s, what is the new season? Well, the 40s. When you are in your 40s, the new season is the 50s. The 50s, the new season is the 60s. The 60s, the new season is the 70s. The 70s, the new season is the 80s. And eventually, the new season, what is? It's the celestial life, going to heaven. You are a happy person when you are ready for the new season in your life. Because you are thinking of your future. You are taking care of things for yourself, for your future. You are a happy person when you are ready for the new season in your life. Are you happy? Let's continue evaluating if you are happy. You are happy if you are spirit-filled and very productive in the kingdom of the Lord and in your church. Happy people are always productive in the kingdom of the Lord. Happy people are ready to pray for anybody all the time. Happy people are always quoting the scripture. Happy people are involved in church. Happy people are always making sure that all the needs in the church are taken care of. Happy people are willing to serve. Happy people are spirit-filled. Meaning what? There is a fruit of the spirit all the time. Are you happy? Let's continue evaluating if you are really happy. You are happy when you always praise the Lord about everything all the time. Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> Somebody says, right? That's a tough one. You know, right now I'm going through a very tough season. This and this is happening in my work. This is, this is happening in my neighborhood. This and this is happening in my family. This and this is happening in my health. This and this is happening. With what are you saying? Well, I'm not really praising the Lord all the time. So you are not happy. Because a happy person always... What, was, what is the word I said? Always. Let's spell it. A-L-W-A-Y-S. What is the word again? Always. always. What, what is the meaning of that word, always? Is that, uh, that means uh, Sunday morning? No. Every morning, no. Every time I think of, no. Always means all the time. Happy people praise the Lord all the time about everything. Even when, when there is an accident, yes. Praise the Lord that we have insurance. Praise the Lord we are close to the hospital. Praise the Lord that that person didn't die. Praise the Lord that not everybody died. You have to praise the Lord. You have to see the positive side. Because we just read it in the, in the psalm. Listen. It says, Psalm 66. He rules the world with his great power. And I'm bringing it to the camera. Because I want you guys to read it yourselves. He rules the world with his great power. There is one ruler of the world, and his name is the Lord God Almighty. He rules the world. He rules whatever is happening in the world. That's why the next psalm says, praise him. Praise him. All nations rejoice and be happy because... The Lord judge people fairly. He knows why things happen. He has a plan. He has a reason. 
That's why happy people praise the Lord always about everything. It doesn't matter how difficult the problem is. It doesn't matter how critical the condition of the person that you love is in the hospital. You are going to praise the Lord. It doesn't matter how huge is the debt you have. You praise the Lord. It doesn't matter how difficult the problem is in your work. You praise the Lord. It doesn't matter how difficult things are wherever we are. We praise the Lord. It doesn't matter because He rules the whole world. Do you understand? Do you see that? He rules the world. It's not you. It's not people. It's not circumstances. It's not Satan. It's not the darkness. The Lord God Almighty rules the world. And He is your Father. He's your Father. He loves you. He cares for you. All that He wants you is that you pay attention to Him. Think of Him. Stop thinking about those that are unhappy. Stop thinking about the economy, the health, your age, the balance in your account. Stop thinking about those things. Think of Him. People that are happy, they praise the Lord all the time. I hope you got it. All the time. If you are a happy person, you constantly see and compliment the good things in others. And you feel honestly happy for their success. Yes, there are times when we are struggling and somebody's in the hospital or we are in trouble financially. Yes, it's true. And when that is happening, somebody else that we know just got a new house, <laughs> just got a new promotion, just got a new car, just got a new baby, just got married. They just came back from their vacation. Happy person. Constantly see, the comp see and compliment the good things in others. They don't talk about bad things. Do you understand? Happy people do not talk bad things. Happy people do not talk negative things. Happy people only speak good things. You are happy. You just speak good things. Things you just compliment the Lord. Beautiful day, Lord. I love the rain and this flood in front of my house. I'm going to get through in my vehicle. Thank you, Jesus. Happy people is what we are. You are a happy person if you are always looking for opportunities to serve others. Who is calling? Oh, it's your nephew. Uh, Again? No. Who's calling? It's your nephew. OK? Hey, what's up? Hey, uncle, I'm calling you because I have this situation. I want to know you can help me with this. OK, well, let's uh, study what are your alternatives. Let me see how can I serve you? How can I help you? You don't need to fix everybody's problems. Look at the difference. You are not in this planet to fix everybody's problems. You are not here to fix everybody's problems. But you are here to serve. So always the happy person is looking for opportunities to serve. How can I serve? How can I help? But it's not my responsibility to fix my nephew's problems. You see the difference? You have to be smart about it. Because you are happy, you're going to do what is right. And if you are happy, the best way that you can know if you are a happy person is if the Bible is the source of your divine inspiration. Because you cannot make a pastor the source of your divine inspiration. That is just wrong. That is just wrong. I don't want to be your source of divine inspiration. I don't want you to put your eyes on me ever. I don't want you to use me as a source of your inspiration. Please do not do that. Happy people find in the Bible the source of your divine inspiration. I am just a messenger. I am like you, another guy. 
But if you are a happy person, you go to the Bible constantly because the Bible, the Word of God, that should be the source of your divine inspiration. It's there in the scripture where you find explanations, solutions. But you know what? Let's, let's face it. Some people are struggling today. And they really don't know what to do with themselves. And they are thinking, you know what? It's true. A happy person makes a happy family. And I am not making my family happy, precisely. It's the opposite. Seems like I am making my family so miserable. So if that is your case, <clears throat> I want you to understand that the true joy comes from the Holy Spirit, my friend. The true joy comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God that comes to dwell in our hearts. You just need to open your heart and say, Lord, I need you. I see that. I understand that I am messed up and I have made many mistakes. I don't want to miss it again. I don't want to make more mistakes. I need you, Lord. Please forgive me. Say those words to the good Lord. Say, Lord, please forgive me and help me to put my eyes on you, Lord. And give me that salvation, that forgiveness that comes through your Holy Spirit. And when you say those words and you mean it, you will experience salvation and joy. And then is when everybody can, can really say, you know what? I feel that my life is going somewhere. This lesson, this message is tough. It's not easy to grasp in one shot. I highly recommend you revisit it again. That's why we have the tools online. You can just watch it again and study it again, review it, and think about it. Reflect on this so you can go ahead and, they, and enjoy your day and be a happy person because in the Lord Jesus we are happy. So all together we can say, I am forgiven and saved by faith in Jesus. This year, I will become more spiritual. And with this beautiful song, Tracy is going to close this service. And are you ready? I have to say something here. Okay. Because this is a confirmation of what you talked about. Um, at the very beginning of the service, I put up here at the very top, I said, Lord, speak to me. I need to hear your voice this morning. And he told me, speak good words. Speak the word of God. And, of course, you know, I saw the bulletin the other day. But I, I really don't remember seeing declaring scriptures. But that's what he spoke to me. And then when I came down here and saw declare scriptures. Beautiful. I just Thank think you, sweetheart. that's so awesome. Thank you, darling. When Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed all my sins away. No matter what happens.
happens. No matter what you're happens. You're going to be happy. You walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Doesn't matter. Thank you so much for coming up to church today, guys, and for our friends, viewers, and listeners. We wish you a beautiful day. May the peace of the good Lord be with you. Be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See you next time.